Hey guys, in this video, I'm gonna show you one phenomenal tax play with short-term rentals that can put a ton of money back in your pocket. Okay, let's get started. All right, so here's the thing about short-term rentals, all right? It's the renting of real estate. And you may think that the income or the losses you bring in from short-term rentals just kind of flows onto your tax return on your Schedule E, just like all of your other rental income. Well, if that's the way you're looking at it, you're wrong. When it comes to short-term rentals, you can actually treat those as a trade or business if you meet certain tests under the Internal Revenue Code. This is something that so many high income earners are missing out on. When I talk to a lot of people, many times they tell me this, Hey Clint, I want to be classified as a real estate professional. And if you've seen my other video on what it takes to be a real estate professional, you know what that means, 750 hours, 50% of your time. But the fact of the matter is a lot of people just can't meet real estate professional status. Now, why would you want real estate professional status for losses, for deductions? Because when you're a real estate professional, you can take any losses you've generated from your real estate. And I'm not talking about tenants not paying you because of COVID or some other reasons that they move out or they just don't like to pay. I'm talking about that depreciation. Maybe you're doing a cost segregation where you're accelerating the depreciation on your property. So at the end of the year, you may have put a lot of cash into your pocket, but you're showing huge losses on your tax return. And the key is you want to capture those losses so you can offset them against your other forms of income. Well, there's a lot of real estate investors, as I stated, that just don't meet that real estate professional status. So what does short-term rentals do for you? It gives you another opportunity to find deductions. Now it's kind of complicated. You have to follow the rules just like you do with a real estate professional, but actually the rules are a little simpler when it comes to meeting this status. So what am I getting at? All right. So here's how the internal revenue code defines short-term rental. If you have a, a property that you rent out for an average of seven days or less. All right. So if you run out your, your, your property for seven days or less, that's the average. So you add them all up, how many rental days you have and what was the average stay. If it's seven days or less, or less than 30 days with significant services. I'll get into that in just a moment. Services. So if you have a, a rental property, you know, vacation, Airbnb property, and you can satisfy one of these two tests, then it's going to take it out of the real estate realm. That means it's no longer considered rental income. It's considered rental income or it's considered income that is from a trader business. Now that is the magical step because if you can take it out of real estate and it's no longer considered income from rental real estate, then you're no longer subject to 469 passive loss rules. And who wants to talk about that? Because that's boring and it's going to put you to sleep. All you got to know is this, meet one of these tests and things are going to look up for you. So let's assume that I have three short-term rentals and my average rental days are seven or less. So I got these three properties here. All right. Got three properties. Now I just put them into service or maybe you've had them for a few years and you've been collecting the rental income on it. You've been taking some standard depreciation, offsetting the income and everything's running fine. But let me show you now how you can do something to use these properties to offset income in other places. For example, let's say your spouse is over here and your spouse is generating $175,000 a year in income from uh, his profession. And you're the one that's running all this, you know, say you're the wife, you're running all these short-term rentals, these three short-term rentals, and you would like to tap into those properties to help cut down on this 175 because you've been looking at it over the last couple of years and you're thinking, man, it'd be nice if we could get some tax savings from, from our real estate. Well, here's how you're going to do it. Now, if you average seven days or less here, the other part of this test is what we call material participation. All right, and, and there's a lot of rules uh, ar around material participation. And what does that mean? So there's seven categories of what it means that you would materially participate in this rental activity here of short-term rentals. Now, the, most, the simplest one, the one I'm gonna focus on 
is the 100-hour requirement. And this really only applies to individuals who are managing their short-term rentals themselves, all right? If you have a professional management company doing this, forget about it, just keep uh, filing your taxes the way you are. But if you're the one managing them, then you need to know about material participation. That means, like when I was running my short-term rentals, I'd get on VRBO and I would set it all up with the tenants and their stays, and their stays were average seven days, and so I would be handling all of that, and personally, I didn't like it, that's why I sold them, but there's a lot of people that make money on this. So, if you're over here, so here's a spouse, the spouse is running these properties, dealing with, with the tenants as they're coming in and out, and as long as you can show that she put in 100 hours this year handling those three properties, so keep a log, then you've met the material participation test. Together with the seven days or less, which makes it a trader business, now you're into a whole new realm. Okay, now some of you may say, oh gosh, Clint, I don't really get where you're going with this. Hold on, I'm coming there. Now, what we wanna do with these short-term rentals is we wanna then figure out a way to get massive losses out of those properties. And it's not by having tenants just decide not to stay there. It's by taking advantage of the depreciation. So if I have these three properties here and I go in and I perform a cost segregation study, which means I accelerate my depreciation. And by doing that study, I'm able to generate $30,000 loss this year, $25,000 loss on this property, and a $40,000 loss on that property. What I now have between these two is $105,000 in losses. I just generated 105K in losses. All right, so that's what's gonna show up on my tax return. Now, if you didn't materially participate, 100 hours, didn't have an average seven days or less, this wouldn't benefit you, okay? It's not gonna help you. But if you do it this way, you materially participate, average rental is seven days or less, and then you perform this cost segregation, accelerated depreciation, I'm gonna do a video on that, um, and you get this $105,000 loss, now things are gonna be different in your life because you're gonna be able to take that loss because it's a trader business loss now, and you're gonna be able to offset it against your spouse's income or your income, whatever it is. And so now you just offset it there. And so you have $70,000 in income for the year. Look at what we just did. We took our properties that before were just generating income for us and we had some depreciation and losses, standard stuff. And maybe we were netting out for tax purposes across all these properties. 25, 30 K a year or 10, 15, whatever it is a year. Now we're going to uh, go into a cost seg and free up a whole bunch of losses here that we can accelerate and take against our income. This is a huge tax play. Now, do you do this every year? No, you can't. This is really a one-time thing. Now, if you were to furnish these places, so if somebody's just starting up and you're going to go in, you're going to furnish them. Hey, there's bonus depreciation right there. You can write off all the furnishings as well. So let's say I spent $50,000 furnishing these three properties. Well, there's another $50,000 I'm taking on my tax return against that other income. You see, it gets even better when you're, you're understanding how the tax code works and how it works with your property here. Now, if I did this this year, let's say I started from day one, and I bought three rental properties this year, then I'm gonna make short-term rentals. You know, I'm, I'm gonna write off all of my furniture that, I, that I'm gonna buy. I'm gonna do a cost seg suck up all this depreciation, put it on my tax return. And next year, if I look at it and I go, hell, this is too much work. Guess what? You can stop. You don't have to keep doing it. But as long as you met it that one year, you get to have these losses. And here's the thing. Maybe you're looking at me, you're going, Clint, I don't make $175,000 a year. I make $65,000 a year. What am I going to do with $155,000 in losses? not pay taxes for the next two to three years because you can carry it forwards. That's what you're gonna do with it. This right here is a tremendous tax benefit for people who engage in short-term rental activity. Now, one other thing that I didn't hit on was this um, less than 30 days with significant services. Okay, so let's assume that your rental period, it's not seven days, all right? So your average rental period is 18 days or 14 days, whatever it is. Are you, out of, are you out of luck? No. Now, if your average rental period is less than 30 days, but more than seven, what you need to then focus on is providing what the IRS term determines or what they call significant services. And so now you have to become more like a concierge. So you have to offer your tenants maid service while they're there. 
offer to set them up on excursions. Do something more. Make it feel like a hotel experience for them. Maybe they want. Maybe if they want to bring in someone to uh, cook one evening for them, so they want to have a dining experience, things like that. As long as you're out there providing those additional types of services and document them, then you can go under this other test. All right. So the seven days, you don't meet that, but because the average is 12 days or 14 days, just start offering significant services on top of that, and then you can qualify under this second prong. Uh, that's available to make this a trader business. Now you still have to materially participate. You can't get away from that. So you got the 100 hours, 30 less than 30 days, more than seven is your average, but you're now giving significant services. And so then you can take massive deductions as well. And, and the thing about this is that I've been looking at is that if you're in the short-term rental space and, and you're generating this, the, this type of income, you know, this first year, great. You get these losses. And I said, you next year, you could turn it over to someone else and let them handle it again. But maybe you don't want to do that. Maybe you still want to work in this, this line of business and you want to handle the properties on your own. Well, if you're handling the properties on your own and providing that significant service, what that's going to also do for you going forwards is it's going to allow you to take that income you're generating from, the, from these properties and you can now make it active income. Now, active income means that it's eligible to be contributed to a retirement plan. So let's assume that you made $19,000, right, from, from your rental activity. You could take all $19,000 of that if it came from short-term rental activity, material participation, seven days or less or 30 days or less with significant services. You need to do this. You need to give those concierge type services. Now you can contribute that 19 k to a solo 401k and you have zero taxable income. You see, there's just so much opportunity out there with real estate. I always talk about asset protection, but there's also the tax side uh, to it as well that you need to be aware of. And a lot of CPAs or tax repairs, they just don't understand it. Be sure to watch, my, uh, watch out for my upcoming video on short-term rentals and if you're a real estate professional, because that's where we're gonna have a problem and you have to account for that in a certain manner. So be sure to watch for that if you fall in that category. Otherwise, hey, if you like this video, hit the like button for me. Got any questions, throw them in there. You know how I like to respond to your questions, guys, and all the best with your investing.